Okay, folks, we are back and up for our second session here. <laughs> we're going to have a blast inside here, guys. This time we're joined by Cool Toy, a.k.a. Douglas. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, tell us what interests you about this whole platform. Yeah, so my name is Douglas Smith. I run a channel on YouTube called Cool Toy. I talk about retro video games, arcade, pinball machine, toys and collectibles, things of my youth and nostalgia. And I'm anxious to play some online games with friends for some of these retro nostalgic titles that I grew up knowing and loving. So hopefully I can do that with Pie Packer. Cool, cool. Awesome. Okay, so I've never played this one before. So you got to tell me what I'm going to be doing that's going to screw things up. <laughs> So, so this is this is go for it go for it sorry <laughs> I, I was just gonna you know rattle off uh, what you mentioned previously so this is a playstation one game this is worms it's a um kind of a, a strategy based attack sequence game where you use various different weapons to attack your other worm comrade friends and ideally try to either lower their health or drop them into uh, a watery a watery grave in this uh, instance, but uh, you're basically just trying to take them out with various different hilarious uh, different weapons and obstacles and uh, objects presented to you. That's exactly this. Um, who uh, I'm going to play this guy, so I'm going to be the red team, and I'm going to try to pick. Uh, oops, sorry, this weapon. <laughs> oh. And I failed. I failed miserably. <laughs> this is what this is about: failing and being in a very awkward position now. <laughs> I'm hearing noise that I was hearing noise that remind me of Lemmings. Kind of reminds me of a Lemmings kind of vibe, for some reason. Maybe. Oh wow! Yeah, I wasted myself. That's, okay, that's, so that's quite the. So, so, so Benjamin, tell us a little bit about how this whole system is working. We're kind of you, you're breaking new ground with this, no doubt about it. But I mean. Mm -hmm. Give us a little bit of a clue as to what the magic is in the background. For sure, and and, and just just to make sure that the game the game keeps going, like someone needs to be green here. So Bruce, these heroes, uh, whoever feels he is Bruce heroes, um, go for it. <laughs> and and so the the system was designed to be you know, <laughs> very uh, robust, and and we we want really wanted to make something that was as low tech as possible but not you know in the bad way in the more accessible way and this is why we built a uh, cloud system that is hybrid um it's not always running in the clouds uh, what happens is when you're playing by yourself the game is going to run locally directly in your web browser and this allows you to get you know the full experience uh with like absolutely no like no matter how good or bad is your connection. Um, so if you, if you play certain games and you have the luck to have your friend at home, this is the Dallas. Uh, when you invite other people to, to buy with you, then it switches to cloud nodes. And basically what happened is the, the safe states from your local is going to be transferred to um, your uh, basically uh, virtual space uh, in the cloud. It's going to run in the clouds and beam the internet, sorry, the video signal to each user. The advantage of this is even if your friend doesn't have a particularly good connection, uh, at the end of the day, the experience is going to be good for you. Uh, and and, and I your relationship, your connection with the server, and we. Go ahead. Well, well, it appears it appears even you are burping out a little bit. All of us here in the Midwest of the United States. I'm in Iowa. We've got Missouri. And we've got mm -hmm. we've got Arkansas here, and you're over in France. And it's and you guys have it set up so it's working off of a server in North America, and it's not like in France coming in because it's stuttering you pretty hard. But I mean th mm -hmm. that that is the interweb. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is always a, a physical limit, you know, with this sense, we cannot go faster than the speed of light. Uh, but <laughs> we try to compress this as much as possible, but also to find different strategies. You know, one of the things that we are bringing to the table uh, in, the, in the very near future is um, a technology that is similar to uh, GGPO. So it's basically rollback networking. The way it works is that the game is going to run locally directly in your web browser and you're going to synchronize two instances. And every time the instances that are synchronized uh, by frame by frame, we see the frames being offset by a few frames. We roll back to the last good version, but this is like so quick that you can't really detect this with the human eye. 
So this is basically what a lot of like fighting uh, publishers, like you know, Street Fighter Five is, is using some of the technology um, to to make sure that even if you're far from a server or if your connection is you know not uh, perfect and your friend happened to be not too far from you, this is a good alternative. So we definitely try to find ways to you know uh, and strategies to make the experience even better. We put a lot of work in the compression, the video compression. We're using like uh, um, basically uh, custom made algorithms and, and, and settings to make sure that when we send the data, the video data to your computer, it's not as heavy as it will be uh, with other, you know, uh, cloud gaming system. The, the, the main reason for that is, um, first of all, the, the, the kind of games we have, the resolution doesn't have to be, you know, uh, uh, as high as 4K games. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a lower resolution, so we send less data. It's a good strategy for us, and 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 we care about this. But we also optimize this a lot. We 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 have on the team, and we're very lucky to have on the team exceptional talents who who have done this kind of like you know work. I just got flame forward. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. For sure. Sorry to interrupt you. I just, I just somebody no snuck up behind me with a flamethrower, and I had to point that out. <laughs> That'll teach you. <laughs> we we have very talented people. We did that uh, for other companies in different capacity, in different ways, and we gathered all these talents together to to build this kind of like state of the art cloud gaming platform <laughs> together. Oh, this is too much fun. Just just watching. I mean, being participative instead of just like a normal Twitch channel where someone's watching one person play a game, and that's become mm -hmm. such a big business. And I, I remember you telling us that you have you have background with Twitch and stuff, and this is more of us actual playing. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to you know to name an exact game. I want to play the original Atari Gauntlet with three of my friends in other parts of the country. I mean, I think I think that kind of a game that otherwise we've been at the arcade feeding the quarters into the machine excessively that, that, oh my gosh, there's so many possibilities in my head right now. This is amazing. Uh, for sure. And I mean, I mean, this kind of like, you know, opens the door of that childhood dream. Like, you know, we all grew up when we wanted to play quote unquote multiplayer, it was going over to our friend's house and mm -hmm. physically sitting on the couch or on the floor in front of the TV playing these games. Um, we always wished back then that we had the opportunity to stay at home and play them, but you know, it didn't exist. You guys are now bringing that childhood dream to the future and allowing access to people to not only you know stream their games easier and better on a simple, easy to use web-based platform, but you're also giving them an opportunity to, um, like we spoke to with the, the Twitch aspect, um, you can bring the fans into the aspect. Your 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 viewers, um, your friends, fans, whatever the case may be, can actually join in and physically play you right then and there if they wanted to. For sure, and you know, before being video game professionals, we are gamers. We, we were kids. We were like, you know, people who enjoyed so much these kind of games, like, you know, sitting on the couch with friends, cousins, family, and, and sharing a very special moment. And, and this was really at the heart of the entire, you know, development. We wanted to make something that felt very much like childhood, that felt very much like the good old days where we all like sitting around and playing. And we want to make this as seamless as possible. One thing I, I really dislike about technology is when it becomes, you know, elitist, when it's hard to access, no matter if it's because it requires complex settings or if it requires like, you know, money, too much money involved with like a big computer or uh, a very, very performant internet connection. My thinking is that everybody should be able to be entertained and have fun. And, and we really focused on this. And, 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 you know, like when I think also about the hardware we created, the Pi Reader, this was really about, you know, the community and, and for us to create something that resonated with the people who helped us during the closed beta. We had the closed beta in France with over 100,000 users and we just wanted to thank them. We, we asked them like, guys, what can we build that will be really oh, awesome, that will be a dream as a gamer? And a lot of them answer like, I want to be able to bring my cartridges. I want to be able to play my cartridges over the internet with my friends. I don't have any, you know, simple way to do it today. So this is this is what triggered the the, the the basically the construction of this of this hardware. And you know, like we we are so happy. It was a huge challenge because you know it's complex to to put in place. It's complex to do it in the in a, in a legal way without you know respect 
without like breaking any law because mm -hmm. we work already with so many licensors we cannot afford to you know do things not perfectly right we, yeah you don't want to sour like, those existing relationships and you don't want exactly. to you know, do all it's this work important. only to tie yourself in court for the next you know two years of course so for us we we put a lot of care and also conversation we've been extremely open with all the licenses we work with about no my worm is dying uh we put so much care and, and, and openness and it, the result has been very successful because at the end of the day we're creating a space that is safe for brands safe for publishers and also safe for users and i think this is what matters it's for me, it's it's a very strong positive alternative to what's you know the other options. It, we have to be honest, like you know, like the, the this industry is very similar to the music industry back in the 2000s when the default option was Napster and other peer-to-peer -peer services. Mm -hmm. And I think it doesn't do us good. We we should really strive to find solutions that will help this industry to be sustainable. We need to give back the money to the publishers so they can continue making great games. So we need to find the same way Spotify found a system to, you know, uh, share the revenue with all the music founders. We need to find a similar system. And this is what we intended with Spybacker. It's something that works for everybody, where everybody is, you know, getting their fair share and that thinks about the user because we are gamers first. And I think this is really the spirit of what we do. Mm -hmm. Very cool, and I, I really love that you guys came up with a, a, a you know the the pie reader so to speak, an, an avenue for people to play their existing cartridges and you know bring in those collections of games because it's one thing for a person to be able to subscribe or sign up to another um, streaming service or you know gameplay service and play the games they know and love, but. A lot of people don't like that whole avenue of double dipping, so to speak, where they're like, well, I've, I bought this game probably four times now. I've got the physical version. I've got it, you know, on this system. I got it on this system. So they don't necessarily want to buy and, you know, gravitate towards triple double dipping sometimes. So the access and the ability to be able to take their cartridge off the shelf, plug it in the pie reader, play it, have an experience with their friends that didn't exist prior. So, um, an absolute amazing and that was just a behemoth explosion wow yeah i think i've got one one worm left standing after that that was catastrophic to say the least and to to, to, to your to your you know common dog uh uh cool toy um first of all like i i i i totally agree with this we the service needs to be accessible and and we we want to bring value to the people and this is why the the base service of Pepeco is free and will be free forever. The, you can play a catalog of 60 licensed games at the moment with your friends for free. Suicide there. That was a suicide there. Totally, totally a suicide. <laughs> and and well, we, we, we monetize the same way, you know, uh, Fortnite, for instance, is monetizing where we sell cosmetics, you know, like the 3D mask. Some of us have been wearing, uh, I saw Ryan with the 3D mask earlier. I'm going to wear one on my face just right now. So I'll become a school. This is what we sell and this is optional. You know, it's, if you just want to make the party more fun and, and something that is, you know, different, uh, we bring this to the table and, and it's been super successful. We sold over 6,000 masks in the last two weeks uh, on the key, during the Kickstarter campaign. Wow. That was That's a impressive. lot of masks. Yeah. And, and, People are very excited about this, and I, I used to be, you know, uh, leading analytics at Facebook for for live video and 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 a bunch of other teams. And one thing I observed in the data is how the AR basically masks were impacting positively engagement on Instagram and Messenger. And it's something that I felt was very positive that I saw in many other contexts. And to me, it was really important to kind of like bring this feature to the platform and to be at the heart of organization. But you know, if you're a more hardcore uh, gamer and you really want to push to the limit this platform, a good way to, to, to do so is to become a premium member. And this is the other way we monetize. So if you want to get your own instance of uh, Pipe Packer so you can bring your own game into your private space, we basically, you know, like most uh, cloud uh, service, we, we, we rent a server space for you, we set it up for you, and this is where you can have fun with your friends and bring your own games. And, and this is the other thing you can pay. You also get a ton of other, you know, features uh, with, with this. 
Uh, how do I drop the bomb at the same time? Oh, oops. <laughs> I think this was a fail. Uh oh. That was a huge fail. <laughs> that no. was a huge fail. No. I was trying to do something really cool and ended up being Countdown miserable. and then nothing. Yeah. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> exactly. Um, but just just going back to, to what I was saying, like the, the the premium subscription is really for people who want to get like to go to, to to go the extra mile. So they get early access to the new games. They get like in unlimited save slots, uh, HD versions of some games where we upscale or increase the resolution depending on the game uh, we're talking about. And they get the bring your own game feature, uh, which is pretty awesome. If you have you know a collection of ROMs that you of course like legally acquired. Uh, which can mean different things depending where you are in the world. Mm -hmm. So, touching base on that legally acquired ROMs, obviously, you know, that, that's a, a gray area in itself, but is there a limitation to, um, I, I guess, the, the systems that these ROMs can um, play? Uh, I assume they're within the realms of what we've already seen right here with, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega. Um, no. type of thing or wow. do they expand further that was quite the shot that was <laughs> that was impressive that was impressive um so the limitation here is um so what happens is that we create a server space that is yours and this mm -hmm. is the the user's responsibility to use things that belong to the user and that were rightfully acquired or not breaking any law uh, we don't have access to the user's data. You know, this is your sure. space. You, you do you. You cannot, as a user, share your ROM with other people. What what happens is that your ROM is going to be executed on a, a private server space, and then this is the video stream of the ROM that you're going to see uh, over the internet. So um, it's you know, uh, it's like you have your friends at home watching your TV. And, and, and playing with you, uh, and, and except the TV signal is extended to your friend's house. And there is no way for you, the other user, to get the ROM, so you cannot distribute the ROM, which is illegal in most countries in the world. So mm -hmm. th this, this is like kind of like the core limitation here. You're not allowed to, to share your ROMs. And then we have an entire reporting system available. If you see someone is obviously like using things that this person should not be using, um, but this is very similar, you know, to a license you have on Microsoft Windows. Uh, you sign, you have the the, the the agreement with Microsoft, and that you're not going to do crazy stuff on, uh, on your Windows. This is the same for us. We, uh, we it really works uh, with basically uh, your you being a responsible human being and not doing you know uh, bad stuff uh, with the system we, we we give you access to. Okay, so it's a, a self-policing private kind of enterprise, so to speak, for the users to, you know, control as they will and hopefully keep everything on the up and up. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Hey, Benjamin, Most do impressive. we have a timeline for when, when we're going to see this different stuff oh. implemented, like the, uh, the new games and, and all that kind of stuff? And also, when people are going to be able to get into this, the Kickstarters versus the average user. Yeah. When, when, when are we getting out of beta? So beta is starting as a early access for the Kickstarter backers on uh, the 22nd of May. So at the end of the campaign, the moment it ends, oh, very cool. backers have, have access and they can, you know, they can play however they like and, and have fun on the platform. The, the service will remain exclusive to Kickstarter backers uh, for a certain amount of time. We're still trying to make it, you know, available for the rest of the community as early as possible. But we, we're focusing on the backers first, and we'll make this available for everybody uh, relatively soon uh, after. But it's still to, you know, we need to define this. Oh, my God. Did this, make was, it? this game's yeah. got a ton of stuff to it. Yeah, okay, that's so okay. good. I think we're ready. Okay, um, we're, Ryan, we're, so yes. to switch controllers, this is the, the last tab on the, the top right-hand corner. Uh, when you click on this, you should be able to, you know, switch controllers and exchange who is playing which player slots. Okay. So if yeah. you want to show this to your Very to cool. your to your camera, okay. Okay. Um, or your capture, that will be great. Okay, I'm gonna do yeah, a quick yeah. I'm gonna do a quick introduction to the segment and just say what we've done, and then we'll talk that through a little bit, and we'll play this game. Um, I'm not gonna awesome, play. Yeah. Um, cool toy. Why don't you take on Benjamin on this game? So so okay. I'll I'll configure it that way. Okay, here we go. 
Okay. Okay, we are back, and we're in a preview version. Ooh, we're excited about this. And they're adding another feature in this. This is a cool thing about this kind of a platform, is they can be developing all kinds of stuff. They added in a feature where I can pick who's going to be what player. So if I don't, let's see, I want to have Benjamin be player number one, I'm guessing. There it is. I'm switching him to player number one. And I'm, I'm going to player put, number one. <laughs> yep. I've got cool toy here coming into player number two. And player number three and four, which this game only has two players, um, isn't is going to show up. So let's see. Let's flip back to there. Xeno Crisis. This looks cool. Um, um, we were playing this earlier before before everybody else joined us in, me and uh, Gunther, and this just looks like a freaking cool game. It, it's an actual awesome game. It's one of my favorite games on the platform. I have a ton of respect for 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 the people uh, making this game. Um, they are based in the UK. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing what they did, like both graphically, both in like in, in terms of gameplay, music. It's really awesome. I think Cool Toy, you gotta pick your character. You can either pick the female or the male soldier, um, and uh, I think this is going to be the uh, the A button. Uh, can you press A uh, just to see if now anything or any button? Yeah, there we go. We got it. There we go. Okay. We, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's make it happen. <laughs> I love this well, game. Well, it's a it's a more tactical version of Smash TV, basically. Exactly. You have a limited amount of ammo, so you got to be careful on how you use them, and it's pretty brutal. You know, like it's you if you get ahead, you die. So. Uh, I like that when you ran out, of, run out of ammo, you can still attack, like a physical attack. It's really cool. You, you can yeah. definitely do it's, that, and it's, you can it's also revive. Attack. You can revive your partner if your partner dies. Uh, you can just walk over your partner, and and it revives it. Um, don't do this in real life. If someone is on the floor dying, <laughs> don't walk on it to revive it. It's usually not a good idea. <laughs> This game would work real well with having like a sportscaster mode. Player number one, you know, a, a third person can be the announcer and he's going for it. He's going for it. Boom! Shakalaka! Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I love the energy. <laughs> well, right. cool. I, I, I guess. Who are I guess, these names? He's got to be names of developers, right? I, I, should hope I so. don't know. I don't know because there are only two. Not so. Enough. <laughs> and there are a lot of hostages. <laughs> so maybe it's family members. I, I, I will ask them next time. I will ask them. Like, this is definitely an interesting idea. <laughs> uh, Benjamin, I guess, you know, we're getting near the end of our, of our session while we're here. What else do you want people to know to know about this platform and, to get, you know, to get the word out among all of our different avenues? So I, I think the main thing that is like, guys, feel free to check out your Kickstarter page. Uh, you can find the Kickstarter pretty easily. Just go on pp uh, uh, dot fun, uh, pp like pi, and uh, pp dot fun, and you'll you'll access the uh, the the, the pie Packer page, and you you'll be able to see like the the pie reader in action, uh, as well as all the uh, the 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 cool uh, reward tiers that we are offering. Um, Stocks are running out, so be quick. We we, we oh, ran out of most tiers, and and a very few items remain. And most of what we sell on the Kickstarter is is unique to the Kickstarter and won't happen again. So, for instance, we offer the uh, the lifetime access, so you get the lifetime premium access. And I'm, I can't revive you in this room, so sorry about this. Like, I'm not being like a jerk. I just can't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, and, just, just step on his grave. Just dance right on yeah. top of his body. Yeah, exactly. Benjamin wants to be the hero. I get it. It's okay. <laughs> oh my God! Sorry. And he's I out. I was trying to carry, but that that I was not good enough. I'm sorry. Well, well let, let's call that a wrap, guys. I appreciate it. this. Is this has been an absolute blast? We're gonna have to get together. If this all works out, we're gonna get together and do a live session with a ton of people watching us and asking questions. Uh, you know, hopefully Absolutely. announced out for this. This is. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's going to be fun with uh, people uh, from the chats. And, and you know, we, we did that uh, a few times and it was always a blast. Uh, and it's it's a very unique experience, especially, you know, for people on the other side of the screen who follow and watch you like all the time. And mm -hmm. they feel this connection and being live with you just like for, for a minute for, for playing the game. It's something very magical. And I really hope like people from your community will be able to, to experience that with you on Pipebacker. So I'm super excited about this. 
Very cool. Absolutely. Thank I'm excited to see it evolve, and uh, I can't wait to see what else you guys come up with. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was that was great playing with you guys. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow.